the EFF doesn't actually declare any funding. So how exactly does it get funding? Well, based on the story we're about to tell you, it looks like perhaps the EFF makes a lot of money through extortion. This is a story that cash crusaders are being uh, extorted by the EFF. So apparently this is the story according to the EFF. Cash Crusaders is racist. Check number one. Number two, Cash Crusaders is racist against black franchisees of Cash Crusaders. And therefore the EFF is really, really upset about this and is going to basically shut down Cash Crusaders across the country until the racism issue is resolved. But actually it's not true. And by black people, well, actually three businesses specifically were named. Namely... Incredible Money, Superb Ride, and Car Junction. So these three franchisees have all had their franchises agreements terminated, basically because they owe the main company 11 million rand. So because they owe them that money, they have gone to court, and they are currently in litigation between the parties. So the parties have actually approached the EFF to help mediate, in terms of the arbitration clause, the dispute. Problem is, the EFF says, well, there's only really one outcome here which is write off the debt and reinstate the franchisees. If you don't, we'll burn down your stores. And Cash Crusaders don't mince their words. They say the ulterior motive of the EFF trying to shut down Cash Crusader stores is that the EFF is working for these disgruntled franchisees. These disgruntled franchisees owe close to 12 million rand to Cash Crusaders based on the outcome of an arbitration. And when the EFF came in to negotiate on behalf of these parties for some reason, they literally said, drop the 12 million rand claim, bring them back into the fold, and then we won't burn down your stores. That is literally the EFF's modus operandi. So, Byron, the question here is, how much is the EFF being paid by these disgruntled parties? And number two, is this the way, a primary way, the EFF actually makes its money? Sheer extortion. Well, one would question a number of things. The first is, since when did the EFF become a dispute resolution service? Their so-called labor desk, which was approached, it's not actually a labor union. Their so-called arbitration method, it's not actually a court. It's kangaroo court. So while the EFF are actually getting involved in a political way, well, really leads to the question. And Crash Crusaders have highlighted this, saying that by the EFF getting involved, this actually interferes with their constitutional rights to conduct their business without harassment from political parties. Does this now mean that the EFF has formally graduated from disgruntled extreme left-wing political party to full-on mafia extortion racket to possibly a terrorist organization in itself? Extortion racket, mafia, basically give us a cut, otherwise we burn down your stuff. I mean, this is classic mafia tactics seen all over the world, especially here in South Africa, because as we well know, the ANC destroys things and the mafias come in and take over and take control of those particular markets. So if you have a legal dispute, Byron, with one of your, who knows, someone, it might not be a bad idea to call up the EFF and say, listen, I'll give you 200K, negotiate on my behalf, and if they don't want to negotiate or you don't win, you just burn down their shit. That sounds like it makes business sense. It's not something I would do because I don't trust the EFF whatsoever. But I can imagine quite a few people would want that to happen and would use the services of the EFF. They give the EFF money and because of their power and PR, a lot of businesses being aggressed by the EFF would concede quite quickly. This does show us exactly who the EFF are. Yeah, the grand irony, though, is that they're not becoming capitalists in the true sense. They're becoming capitalists in the Mexican drug cartel sense. So with that all being said, when the police fall back, the cartels take over. And in this instance, the cartel happens to be the EFF. And it also goes back to political party funding. You're not going to fund the EFF to do this, right, directly. You're going to fund one of their guys or one of the trusts that are around them or one of the businesses around the EFF. So it's a very good way to funnel money into the EFF by providing a service, and I use that term very liberally, without having to declare it to the IEC. So what is picking up the slack? Well, it looks like the extortion racket is. The question I would leave this uh, segment on is just how long till we actually outlaw the EFF has been nothing more than a crime syndicate government that is known to have stolen more than any other government in history. And they're still in power. They haven't been locked up yet for state capture and state capture 2.0 and every other looting episode that they've had. 
So don't really see how the criminals could lock up the criminals, huh? So at the end of the day, we're just going to be governed by criminals. Yeah, very much so. And if the EFF Labour desk rock up at your front door, just think to yourself, which of my competitors or opposition would hire these Muppets to do their dirty work for them? And once you realize who that might be, now you know why the EFF is actually there. They don't give a shit about racism. They don't care about black workers. They don't care about any of that. They just want their pound of flesh and they will extort anyone to get it, even 